subject. It's no surprise. I'm preaching intentional. I shall be whole. I want everybody to shout, I shall, I shall. be whole. Say it again, I shall, I shall. be whole. Now say it like you really mean it. I shall, I shall. be whole. word whole here comes from a Greek word that literally means salvation. Salvation from temporal sickness. In this case, from suffering, from danger, from bondage. For whatever it is that you're facing tonight, the enemy has tried to afflict our district missionary. The enemy has tried to afflict others. Some of the afflictions are physical some of the attempts are financial. Some of those are attempts at your dreams and visions. The enemy wants to try to afflict. But tonight, God's changing everything. For well, somebody is going to believe God. And somebody is going to shout, I shall be whole. Amen. I'm intentional about this. See? If I gave you a good little short working definition of intentional, I was intentional is just this attitude of just simply saying, I meant to do this. Amen. That chair is where I placed it. I chose this tie and this handkerchief. I meant to put it there. It didn't just drop out the sky. Praise the Lord. I'm looking at you tonight, email with those matching earrings and gold earrings that's shaped like a leaf with a necklace on them that has the leaf-like shape. Looking good, the gold against that red dress. <laughs> Sitting beside your uh, intended, soon to be married, with your hair all dooted up. <laughs> You're looking good, girl. Say what you will to me. You didn't, you didn't get out of bed like that. You in, it's intentional, intentional, praise the Lord, that you, you meant to do it. Say amen. amen. Look at your neighbor and say, I meant to do this. I to do this. Amen. I, 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 what I have on, I, I put it on. Amen. I was going to say, where you are seated, you might want to say, I meant to sit here, but the ushers may have. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know about I, I might need to stop with the <laughs> Amen. I shall be well again. Amen. Notice the intentionality of her actions. She intentionally touched our Lord's garment with the express purpose of being made whole. When you we're dealing with intentional, intentional has to do with purpose. Amen. Something that uh, you want it to happen. Amen. Things that we do intentionally are not accidents. And the whole purpose of this FAM conference is that we want to be intentional. We want to be deliberate, calculated, Cautious, intended, planned, knowing, willful in what we do for the Lord. She purposely, tonight, got what she wanted from the Lord. I wonder, will you tonight? Amen. Did you come because I asked you to and pleaded with you, dared you? 
Those are good reasons to show up. But a better reason is I want what God has for me. And I want to be whole. I want to be delivered. I want this yoke broken. I want God to, I want God to afflict that which is trying to afflict me. Because I have something to do for him. I have an assignment and I can't do it broken. Can't do it afflicted. Amen. I want to be well. Sometimes you get tired of being sick. Tired, you, get, you get tired of being tired. Some of us are too young to be so low energy. We got to ask God to break the yoke. And he's a yoke breaker and a way maker. Say amen. Our text, in our text, Mark tells the story of a desperate, hemorrhaging woman with an incurable disease. All of the, the, the synoptics sets this story in the context of a, another story. Our Lord was on his way to Jairus' house to heal his daughter. Amen. This is almost an insulary story because Jesus was on his way to do something else. But while going to Jairus' house to heal his daughter, there was a desperate woman who was very sick and life had dealt her a very negative hand. The precise nature of the woman's ailment is not stated in Scripture. Probably she had some type of uterine disease that caused the bleeding that had persisted for 12 years. We don't know the name of the condition, but anything that causes you to bleed for 12 years is bad. Amen. According to verse 26 of our text, she had tried to get help. She had suffered much, had been treated by many doctors, had, and, and, and listen to this, and had spent all of her money. She had gone through many painful treatments. One can only imagine when dealing with such a sensitive and delicate area of her body. Going through all of these treatments. And now we find her penniless. And the condition is still persistent and nothing had improved. For all that she spent, for all that she had done, the, 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 her condition, uh, not only did it not improve, but the text tells us that it had gotten worse. So in the 12th year, the flux, the flow was worse than it was in the first year. Her body had to be in terrible shape dealing with this condition. Can you imagine the number of doctors that had treated her? 
the number of waiting rooms that she had sat in, the dashed hopes and disappointments after disappointments as uh, the efforts failed her. Try this and try that. Take this pill. Take this medicine. Apply this. Apply that. Eat this. Eat that. Get some rest. You'll be all right. It will be all right. It went from these things to this. Poor thing. Can't help you. Too bad. It's a shame. She must have sinned. You know how people are. Stay away from her. I wonder, is it contagious? She's cursed. She has the devil in her. That's why she's sick. By now, she's on her own. Amen. And by now, her own mind. And her own thoughts had turned against her. Hope that she would ever be healed, all hope was gone. Praise the Lord. This constant bleeding with all that is accounted with this condition had become her new normal. This was her new reality. Anything that you've had to contend with for 12 years, that's a lifestyle. Praise the Lord. That's, that's normal for you now. So when she would pack her bags to leave home, she knew what to pack extra. She knew that going to visit friends and maybe spending a weekend with the girlfriends, just chilling out, by now was a thing of the past. You don't hear me. Her life was not a good one. By the time of our text, that she, uh, she is uh, anemic. She had to have severe headaches. She has shivers because of a loss of blood. Her body was not able to hold its temperature. When everybody else was hot, she was cold. You don't hear me. Her immune system was greatly compromised. She, had, uh, she was weak and had dark rings, dark circles around her eyes. Her, en her energy was very low. And we find her in our text all alone. I wish I could get, get you to pray for me. Every day for her by now, Ladies, was a bad hair day because when you're losing nutrients and you're sick like that, that affects your hair. Oh my, if she had any by this time. And she was not able to maintain her weight and she was most certainly not able to gain weight. Her skin by now was very bad and her nails were frail. Her body was starved of nutrition and her body was starved of oxygen because oxygen flows in the blood. Oxygen feeds the inner organs so that they will function properly. Well, as she suffers this massive blood loss, praise the Lord, her inner organs, her heart, her lungs, all of her inner organs are screaming by now for oxygen. She's in bad shape. And uh, it gets even worse. By now, the old ship of Zion had set sail. And guess what? The ship was headed for her. She was the next one to be picked up. The sun was going down. Her social life was non-existent. God Almighty, she lived in a perpetual state of uncleanness. She was ceremonially unclean. Physically, she was not able to be as clean as she wanted to be. Uh, according to the Bible, the chair that she sat in was unclean. 
The bed that she slept in was unclean. Praise the Lord. If you came in contact with her, you were considered to be unclean. Oh, her world was a sad world. Your heart can't help but go out to this woman. Leviticus chapter 15 and verse 25 says, If a woman have an issue of her body, an uh, issue of her blood many days out of the time of her separation, beyond that which is according to the natural course of nature, or if it run beyond the time of her separation, all the days of the issue of her uncleanness shall be as the days of her separation. She shall be unclean. She can't go into the temple. She can't uh, come into contact with people. She was separated. Every bed whereon she lieth all the days of her issue shall be unto her as the bed of her separation. And whatsoever uh, she sitteth upon shall be unclean as the uncleanness of her separation. And whosoever toucheth those things shall be unclean and shall wash uh, his clothes and bathe himself in water and shall be unclean until the evening. And if she be cleansed of her issue, then she shall number herself seven days. And after that, she shall be clean. And then she could come and join the rest of the people after she give an offering. The point is, this lady had, by the time of our text, are you praying for me? A terrible life. Twelve years of sickness. In the 12 years of sickness, there were many of the 12 filled with loneliness. She was an outcast. Now broke. Now hungry. And now alone. And still sick. But. 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 Thank God for some nameless missionary. Thank God for some nameless preacher. For we're not told in our text how she heard. But our text tells us that somebody had told her about Jesus. God Almighty, I wonder today, would you let your mind go back to whoever that person was who told you about Jesus? What a difference. That good news made. Somebody told her about Jesus and they told her that he is a healer. Oh, it's looking better now. She heard that he's a way maker. Mm -hmm. She heard that he is the savior. Upon hearing about Jesus, when she heard about Jesus, wonder, purpose returned to her life. For before she heard about Jesus, purpose was gone. Mm, her life began to be one of just survival. I've got to survive and how long will I survive? Upon hearing about Jesus, intent returned. Yeah, determination returned when she heard about the Lord. And upon hearing about Jesus, guess what happened? If she, uh, once she heard about him and when she saw him, because she realized that he was her only hope, she then developed a scheme. I hope uh, I have some schemers in here tonight. Because if you're thinking, you're saying to yourself, I'm going to make a beeline to my spot on the altar. When the time comes, I'm going to be among the first because I want what God has for me. Bring me up a little bit, sound a technician. See, when, 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 when you believe this thing, then you begin to plan on how you can get what God has for you. Thank you, Jesus. See, when you have no faith, there's no scheme. When there's no hope, there's no plan. 
Uh, amen. When there's no hope, there's no uh, working it out to try to get what God has for you. But when she uh, heard about Jesus and then looked out and saw him, she became intentional. Matthew tells us that she didn't have anybody to talk to. But that's all right. The Bible said, the Bible tells us that she had no support network. She had no amen corner. And she had no one to give her advice. So then she used what she had. No mother and no father. No sisters and no brothers. No husband, no boyfriend. When she looked to the right, there was no one. And when she looked to the left, there was no one. So she did all, she worked with what she had. Tonight I want to tell you, you got to learn how to use what you got. Praise the Lord, you got to use what you got. Maybe a little, and it may not be a lot, but you got to use what you got. But the question is, what did she have? She had herself. She had a scheme in her mind. And Matthew said that she said within herself, if I may but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be whole. You know, if you're sitting here tonight saying no matter what, nothing's going to change and you won't get anything. Oh, if you're sitting here tonight saying that sounds good, uh, but I heard it before, you won't get anything. But if there's somebody tonight who can just muster up enough faith to believe that if I can just believe God, if I can just give him the praise that he deserved, if I can just get in the right place, I can determine my own outcome. Not I'll be made to feel better. Not I'll just get a blessing. But Lord, I want to be made whole. Lord, I want you to touch me tonight and change everything. Lift your hands and tell him yes. Tell him yes if you can believe God. Good God Almighty. Sometimes you got to talk to yourself. The Bible said in 1 Samuel chapter 30 and verse 6 that David encouraged himself even when his men wanted to stone him and when his friends turned their back on him and when he found out that his wives had been taken captive and the city was burned and uh, all of his soldiers had blamed him for it. He began to pat himself on the shoulder, pat himself on the back and say, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I challenge somebody right now to encourage yourself. Maybe things aren't the way you want them to be. Maybe you feel overlooked and left out. Maybe you feel down and out. But I challenge you right where you stand to tell yourself that you can make it. You know we've been trained to talk to our neighbor. But tonight I don't want you to talk to your neighbor. Tonight I want you to talk to yourself and tell yourself by the help of God I'll be all right. Yeah! Ah! Somebody praise him in the room. She said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, drawing upon the last ounces of her assertive energies, I see her now. Loosening herself. Get her ready. Saying to herself, this is my shot. But between her and healing was a large crowd of people. So she gathers up what little energy she has left after 12 years of a constant flow. Headaches, heartaches, 
heartbreaks, painful surgeries, money gone, a social outcast, but she gathers her strength. I wonder if anybody here tonight, are you gathering yourself? She shoulders her way into the position. She goes into the crowd and begin to shoulder her way into the crowd, working, trying to get to Jesus. Some of us are too cool and too polite and too pretty to get a blessing, but sometimes you got to let cool go. Sometimes you got to let protocol go. Sometimes you got to let politeness go and just get caught up in the presence of the Lord and say, Lord, touch me right now. Yeah. Give God a praise that doesn't include looking good. Not trying to be cool now. Trying to get what I need. She begins to work her way into the crowd. Thank you, Jesus. Looking, planning, and timing. Saying that I can, if I can just get close enough, when the time is right, I'm going to launch. I'm going to make my move. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to touch him. Thank you, sir. Can you imagine, hallelujah, that is taking everything she's got to get close to the Savior. Luke said that she wanted to touch the borders of his garment. Now Deuteronomy 22 and 12 says, Thou shalt make thee fringes, fringes upon the four corners of that vesture. In other words, you're going to put tassels on the corners of your garment. Thank you for watching God First with Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. and the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. To experience this message in its entirety, call 877-463-3477 to purchase a DVD or CD. God First will return next week at the same time. Until then, make every day a God First day. God First.